The birth of Jesus in a manger is the focus of our attention. Everywhere you see stars announcing the birth of a king. Jesus was born in the house of a Jewish woman, Mary, that was announced during the prayer little service that we had. His birth was foretold by the ancient prophets 700, 800 years before his birth, like Isaiah, Micah, where he indicates where he would be born, that is in Bethlehem. There was great expectation in Israel as they were under the Roman oppression, exploitation, violence, where Roman soldiers and governors would just crucify the people on the wayside, naked, having no strip of clothing over them, just to threaten the people and they would extract immense amount of taxes. Corruption and violence was rampant. Even the historians like Tacitus and Suetonius, the Roman historians were of the time speculated that the time was ripe for the arrival of the ruler of the world. And that time there appeared a special star bringing the message of hope. We see these stars and that was foretold many, many years ago that a star would appear. The wise men, they were philosophers or astronomers, men of science from the east came searching for the newborn king by looking at the star which was very special. They say perhaps it was between 6 and 7 BC or even a little, little later. They couldn't exactly calculate what it could be. However, they traveled in the direction of the star. They were wise men who were truly seeking the truth and they were men of science as they studied the movement of the stars. They moved towards the kingdom of Judah in Israel and then they came to the palace of King Herod, seeking the child born there, but they did not find him. Instead, they asked the scripture scholars, and the scholars told them that the king would be born in the city of David, Bethlehem. And finally, they direct their steps towards Bethlehem, only to find the little babe wrapped in swaddling clothes laid on a manger, the place where the animals eat their food. God has become small as a fragile child. But the angel had announced that he would be called the son of the Most High. He has become a beautiful babe and this baby brings the learned men and women together. Even today, all of us men of science, philosophers, thinkers, people who are in the administration. We are like those three or more. We do not know the exact number, though we say three wise men. And like those men, we are also here to learn from Jesus the art of loving and the art of self-giving, giving to the extent that it totally gives oneself, totally. Self-donation, it is said. Contemplating the life of Jesus, Swami Vivekananda once said, had I lived in Palestine in the days of Jesus of Nazareth, I would have washed his feet, not with the tears, but with the hearts, with my heart's blood. Such was his love for Jesus. And it is said he founded the Ramakrishna mission on the eve of Christmas. Even now, the members of the Ramakrishna mission celebrate Christmas, sing the carols and celebrate the birth of Jesus. There's a little write-up whose author is unknown, but this little piece narrates about Jesus. One solitary life, that's the title. I just read, quote, One solitary life. He was born in an obscure village the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in another's obscure village 
where he worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30 he never wrote a book he never held an office he never went to college he never visited a big city he never traveled more than 200 miles from the place where he was born he did none of the things usually associated with greatness he had no credentials but himself he was only 33 and his friends ran away one of them denied him he was turned over to his enemies and went through the mockery of a trial he was nailed to a cross between two thieves while dying his executioners gambled for his clothing the only property he had on earth when he was dead he was laid in a borrowed grave through the pity of a friend now 19th century as well 20th century have passed they have come and gone and today jesus is the central figure of the human race and the leader of mankind's progress all the armies that have ever marched all the navies that have ever sailed all the parliaments that ever sat all the kings that ever reigned put together have not affected the life of mankind on earth as powerfully as that one solitary life a beautiful summary of the life of jesus but the author has not signed it even today if you ask in the world which is the first book that was print, printed after the printing press was discovered by gutenberg and it was the bible once i went to mainz to see that a copy of that bible huge huge bible is the first book he printed 10 books it is said and one copy was kept there in germany and even today highest number of copies are printed of one book and that is bible no other book is printed as much as the bible and the message of jesus gets circulated people irrespective of their alliance or allegiance still read this one book i once visited one of the printing press of uh, a person and i asked him the in three shifts they are printing how many books do you print how many bibles he said more than one and a half crores per year every day people printing because so many copies are taken away and another press i also visited you think of that's in bombay and every day the people are printing the bibles in china there's a biggest number of printing of the bibles and in many other countries think of the countries all over the world so to show that there is one solitary life that is affecting the life of human kind whether one is a christian by baptism or not still one wants to listen to jesus contemplate him meditate on him and uh, borrow or get imbibe his message may that lord jesus who has brought us together who is called as the creator of the world the creator of everything that exists the word of god through whom everything is created is born not as a angel not as a subhuman animal not as any other organism micro or macro organism but as a human being and that's the reason why christians respect the human being from womb to tomb moment of the zygote from the first moment of conception the zygote till the death and even beyond the christians respect the human life because god has shared our life the purpose of this sharing of his life with us and to resemble us is to make us resemble god that we become god a part of god a portion of god that's why this christmas builds such bonding bandhutva it unites us as brothers and sisters bandhutva fraternity love relationship and jesus in some way is having the face of the leper of the blind of the deaf of the maimed 
of the person who is suffering, of the person who is just coming for alms. He can come in any form. And in the history of the church, he has come in the form of these kind of people, the most suffering and the lowliest ones. And then he says, whatever you have done to the least of my brethren, you have done unto me. That is the message of Christmas, to learn from Jesus, to be meek and humble, to be kind and gentle, to work, walk, and to respect one another with simplicity, compassion, humility, and become someone similar to him, and that God will be pleased with us when we love one another. And that's his message. Love one another as I have loved you. Placing himself right in front of us, that is the way to love. That is to give one's life, to save the friends and the enemies alike. And then we will have peace. Happy Christmas to you. Thank you once again for the director and all the hospital staff that has helped us for this uh, premises for this little gathering. We used to have this function at the bishop's house. Father Richard asked me, shall we not have a change? And I said, yes. And uh, this has become a wonderful occasion where we could meet one another, sit with one another, experience that fraternal love. May Christ bless us all. Happy Christmas and may God bless you. Thank you once again.